What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. It is like pee and rain today, but that's all right. I don't mind it, it's kind of soothing. It's a little bit relaxing. Not really, I wish it was nice and sunny out. So today we're gonna be doing all the fuel line in the STI. We're gonna be doing DIY fuel line. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make AN lines using braided fuel line. Uh, I got this kit from IAG. Now originally this kit is for the stock fuel pressure regulator, but we're gonna be using an Aeromotive A1000. The Aeromotive A1000 is pretty much my go-to fuel pressure regulator. You guys have asked me in the past, uh, what fuel pressure pressure regulators do I recommend? 100% Aeromotive. So there's a couple fittings that I had to order to make this work with the Aeromotive fuel kit, but I'll show you guys kind of everything that goes like with this kit, how to do fuel line, how to set everything up. We are gonna have to make a custom bracket for the fuel pressure regulator, but it's not something that's gonna be terribly hard. So in our engine bay, we need to do all the fuel line stuff. Now you guys are gonna see that the air oil separator is in here with some of the lines done. Uh, I started installing that. I am working on the video on that one, but I can't finish the video till obviously everything else gets put back in the car. Um, so just don't, don't worry about the air oil separator right now. But we've got fuel rail over here, fuel rail over here. We need to connect that up to those fuel lines up there with our fuel pressure regulator. So what I have over here is obviously the Aeromotive A1000. So you're gonna have to order some Dash 6 ORB fittings if you don't buy the correct kit like I did. If you buy the correct kit, it'll come with absolutely everything you need. So we have our fuel pressure regulator, our three fittings. We have our fuel pressure regulator gauge. This is this is what I was gonna use on the 17 STI uh, before we ended up doing the digital fuel pressure sensor. So that'll work just fine for this application. We have all of our fuel line here. I did get started Started and did do a test line last night just to make sure that I was able to do these. Um, I did have a small issue with this, but I'll show you what that was. It was just me being a little bit stupid. We have our adapters for the stock fuel rails or the fuel line coming out of the firewall of the car. A couple of like T fittings and vacuum lines for the reference off of that, but I don't think we're gonna need that too much, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, we have a couple of T fittings for the fuel line and then we have these nice little hose crimps. Uh, I may have to go out and buy a special tool for these, but we can at least get everything somewhat set up before we have to crimp those down. So what we need to do first, or what I'm gonna start doing first, is I'm gonna get the fuel rails on the front side, the front closest side. Those are gonna feed into a T fitting that we're gonna put like right up here. And then once we get that T fitting done, uh, we'll probably mount up the fuel pressure regulator just so that way we can do like line length on absolutely everything else, get everything else situated. But for the most part, we can start off easy, get these first two fittings done. Uh, and I can kind of walk you through how to make this fuel line. Before we jump into it, a couple tools that you guys are gonna need also is an AN wrench. I just have an adjustable one. It's been working just fine. Uh, some type of hose cutters, I've used these for a lot of things these things are awesome i'll link all these tools down in the description as well um, i also have some scissors that have been working fairly well too just to clean up a little bit of the fraying coming off of the line uh, we have a tape measure just to be able to measure line and then you're going to need a n uh, vice jaw so they're just inserts that sit inside of a vice they have magnets on the back of them they have this nice recess right here for fuel line and then they've also got two more for a n fittings in there so let's get the camera set up and i'll show you guys how to make some of this line and then uh, we can go from there all right so first thing you obviously got to do is cut your line length so i just went up in the inch bay, cut line length on this, just took measurements just to make sure that we were all good. Next step, we have to assemble the line. So these AN fittings come apart in two pieces. So if you unscrew it like so, you've got like this weird like nipple looking piece on one end and then you've got like this threaded insert on the other. Now, whenever it comes to installing these, I, when I first did this, I thought you just like shove it right on there. These little nuts are reverse threaded. So instead of lefty loosey, righty tighty, it's righty loosey, lefty tighty. So they're, you literally just reverse thread them on. So you're gonna push and reverse thread and they just go right on. Don't try to do what I did and try to do the opposite way because it's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work out for you all that well. So you're just gonna get the AN fitting pretty snug in there. You don't need to go all the way, but there is like a small retaining wall that you're gonna wanna get close to. So I'd say that's probably about good right there. I don't really know if you guys are gonna be able to see inside of that line, but inside of there, there's a small retaining wall that stops the line from going any further out. So once you've got the line kind of set up in this fitting, now we gotta throw it in the vise. So now on the vise, you can see like the two little like jaw guys. We're just gonna slide our AN fitting down in there. Get it nice and snugged up so it doesn't move. Now, some of you guys are like, why do you need these? 
Why do you need these weird like vice attachment things? Well, AN fittings are aluminum obviously and the aluminum can damage easily so the steel or the iron on the vice, whatever type of vice you have, uh, will just chew into the AN fittings. Nobody wants that. So now we're ready to just get this guy on there. So it literally just threads right in. Before you go to thread this in though, uh, make sure you do put like a small dab of oil on that line. I need to get a little bit of oil on my finger. There we go. So I got a little bit of oil on my finger. I'm just gonna lube up the threads. I mean, you can do it dry. I wouldn't suggest doing so though. I mean, you could damage it. Like I said, these are aluminum and uh, they damage pretty easily. So now just start threading this guy in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, get in your home. Wipe off like the excess oil that's on the outside of that. And now we're gonna start tightening this guy down. Bam, that's pretty tight right there. You don't need to like really, really like crank on it, but just get it tight. Now we have fuel line. We have an AN fitting on our fuel line. So now we can go fit this up in the engine bay and I'll kind of show you guys where I'm routing these. You can route them pretty much however you want. Uh, just line length is obviously gonna be the biggest contributing factor to how much line you have. If I run out of dash six line, I'll order a little bit more. I foresee that I might, uh, but you know what? We'll figure that out when, they, when we get there. So let me get this line in the car and then uh, I'll show you guys where I'm routing them all. So we've got both of our feed lines ran off the fuel rail. So the feed line is gonna be the one closest to the front of the car. So this one I just have wrapping going down in between the harness. Uh, I'm trying to leave as much room as I can right here for the turbo inlet. And then it wraps underneath of this uh, crossover pipe for the radiator, goes down right there, wraps around and then goes up to our T. On the other side, the fuel line, which kind of is a little difficult to see right there, wraps down through here behind the all or behind the AC compressor coming around and then you can see it right there pop out and then go to our T right there. Now that's just going to connect up to our feed line up here. So on all Subarus, it's pretty standard. You have three lines coming off of the firewall. The gray one up top is gonna be your return. The blue one is going to be your EVAP. And then the black one on the bottom in our case is going to be our feed. So feed is black, EVAP is blue, white is return. So I've already got the feed line kind of mocked up here. I'm gonna work on getting this in here a little bit more. I'd like to get that fuel line seated all the way against the back of that fitting. It's just such a tight fit to get it in there that it's a little bit of a struggle. So I'm gonna come back to this here in a little bit uh, and I don't want to really get this line in there quite yet but uh, these suck I'm gonna be straight up honest they suck so now we need to do the return side so the return side's a little bit more uh, in depth so the return is going to come off of the back of the fuel rails there and then it's going to go up to our fuel pressure regulator and then the fuel pressure regulator is going to go up back into the firewall so looking at our fuel pressure regulator right here that bottom fitting right there on that is gonna go up to our firewall. And then these are going to go to our fuel rail. So this side is going to end up going to the passenger side fuel rail, while this side goes off of the driver's side fuel rail. But we can't start making those fuel lines yet because we need to find a spot to mount this fuel pressure regulator and get it mounted up. So uh, let me like, find a spot where I want to put this in the engine bay. Once I get that spot found, uh, we'll either make a bracket, mount it up, and then we'll start doing more fuel lines. So I think I know where I'm going to put this. Um, I did put the gauge on there just to see like clearances, but on the manifold here, there's like two bolts that I'm not using anymore. So I feel like I can make a bracket to make the fuel pressure regulator sit right there. It would sit a little bit higher than everything else, but it's still easily accessible. I can keep the washer bin. That port on the right side would just go down to that fuel rail right there with two 90s, that would be easy. That bottom port right there would go up to the feed line, which would be easy. And then that left port, I would have to feed down under the manifold over to the rail on that side, which isn't too bad. It just means we might have to order some more fuel line, uh, but I think I'm gonna whip up a bracket real quick just to be able to mount this guy like right there. I just, I don't know. I think that's the best location. It will clear the hood still too. Well, even if I make the bracket right there, I can sink it down a little bit further just so that way. You know what, we're gonna do it. We're gonna go for it. Let me, I'm gonna build a bracket for this. I've just got some like spare, like sheet metal, some steel in here. Uh, I think this is 16 gauge. I don't remember what gauge this is, but let me get some measurements. Let me whip something up and uh, let's make a bracket.
So I think I've got this bracket pretty much figured out. It's very difficult to make this bracket for this fuel pressure regulator because I don't know where the intercooler piping is 100% going to sit. I've been looking at a lot of photos of front mounts on like GD chassis cars and it looks like we're gonna clear and it looks like we're gonna be good. This is like iteration two or three of bracket. Uh, I ran out of material on the bottom of it. So one side is zip tied, one side's bolted on, but it's like on there, it's not going anywhere. So I did test fit one of the 90s down there and we do clear the fuel rail because that was one of my biggest issues with this. Um, as for the intercooler piping, it looks like it'll come up and be more up here near the master cylinder uh, than it will right here because this protrudes out pretty far. If we have to lose the fuel pressure regulator gauge, then so be it. I can put in like a remote sensor or a remote wire here to be able to like move the gauge over here or something like that just so we know what our fuel pressure is. Uh, but I feel like this is the best solution for what we got. So I'm using two of the old holes on the intake manifold right there and right there. I did powder coat it just to make it a look little, just to make it look a little bit better, but I do think I scuffed it up quite a bit when going through and when going through here and doing this. But anyways, now we're ready to actually run the fuel lines now that we know the general location. I'm probably gonna leave a little bit of slack on these lines just in case we have to move that a little bit. So this port right here on the left side of the fuel pressure regulator is gonna go to the rear passenger side fuel rail. This front one is gonna go right down there to the front passenger or the front driver fuel rail. And then the one on the bottom is gonna go up here to this line. So I'm gonna start with the longest line first. I'm gonna do this one right here and then wrap it down and around to the other fuel rail over there just so we can get routing. I think I'm gonna end up coming like through the TGVs and then coming up to like right here, just having it come up. So let's get another line made and uh, hopefully everything works out in our favor here. So I think I've got this pretty much figured out at this point. So. Here is our fuel line that goes to the rear side of the fuel rail over here. I just have it wrapping underneath the manifold and going underneath of the coolant crossover pipes. Uh, that I can pull the intake manifold back off here in a second to show you guys, uh, but I do have everything hooked up to the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to run the gauge because I'm so curious if this is actually going to clear the intercooler piping. I know it will without the gauge, but with the gauge, the gauge just sticks out a little bit further, so I'm not entirely sure on that aspect. Uh, we have our return line going from the bottom of the fuel pressure regulator up to the thing up there. It's just loosely set on there right now. But here's where I'm having a problem and I can't actually finish the fuel line today. So right down there on the fuel rail, you can see a 90 degree fitting. I need to make this right here, that fitting go right there to the fuel rail. So I think I'm gonna order a 45 degree fitting just to have it like come down maybe and then maybe another 45. So that way it's just a small little like loop right there. It's just even with two 90s on there, it's just not gonna work. I mean, I could also, I'm gonna try getting a straight fitting in a couple 45s or 60s and we will, uh, we'll see what the best route to get those to fit right there is because we just gotta go right there from right there and just running two 90s it just doesn't line up at all i checked my bin up there where i keep all my extra an fittings and all i have is dash 10 and dash 12 an fittings uh not entirely sure why but that seems like that's all i have for some reason but uh pretty happy with this one thing that i was a little concerned about if you guys do decide to mount it here like i did is check for hood clearance because your hood will come dangerously close to the top of the fuel pressure regulator all i did was put a little dab of some like black sealant on there and close the hood to see if it would dab the hood it did not touch the hood so we're good on clearance so everything right here is looking awesome i am really hoping that we can run that fuel pressure regulator gauge right there because a i think it looks really good and b i would like to know what our fuel pressure is because that's an important aspect of what we're doing here but i mean overall this came out a lot better than i thought it did or than i thought it was going to because i had no idea where i was going to mount this thing up at first uh, if you you guys are doing a custom setup like this if you're making your own fuel line if you're using a special like fuel pressure regulator and no one makes like an off-the-shelf bracket for it this is a really good way to go but uh, making fuel line incredibly easy just remember those collars that go onto the fuel line all reverse threaded so it's lefty tidy righty loosey it's really weird i know but we're there you guys it's there all we have left to do with the fuel pressure regulator at this point is like i said hook up that one line and then run reference to it we're not going to run reference off of that thing quite yet not until we get the intake manifold permanently mounted back on here but let me pull the manifold off i'll show you guys the routing for all of this line uh and then from there i guess we'll wrap up the video we got some custom fuel line now so just to show you guys the routing on all this fuel line again so we still have to do that little t right there 
up to the feed just because I don't have the tool to actually put the crimps on quite yet. So it's just hanging out right there. Uh, but we have our first or we have our first feed coming off right here, going down underneath the coolant passage, wrapping back around right here to our T. The other feed on this one goes in between the TGV delete and the actual AC compressor, and then it wraps down meets up at the T right there. As for the return on this side, it wraps down. I wanted to leave as much room right here as I could for the turbo. Um, so this guy's just kind of tucked right down as far as I can get it. It's away from any hot like heat sources, uh, like the exhaust manifold uh, or the hot side of the turbo, everything like that. Uh, I might put a little bit of sheathing over these. I do have some uh, up in my AN bin way up there, uh, but this one wraps all the way around, comes up, bloop, follows that other line through the compressor and the TGV delete and then wraps up to right here. The other one, this is what I was talking about. So we need to get like a 60 degree fitting or something to be able to do this fuel line, but it's pretty much done at that point. Um, quick reminder on these, remember gray is return, black is feed, blue is evap. And then, like I said, we have our one fuel line done that goes from the T up to that guy. I don't know where I'm gonna route that one yet. I'm not gonna know until I get all this done, but incredibly happy with this. Our fuel line is like 90, 95% done. We're pretty much home free. So if making your own fuel line and doing your own fuel pressure regulator set for something you guys are interested in it's definitely worth doing it's definitely not as hard as like it seems it's just really finding a good mounting location for your fuel pressure regulator just because you're gonna have so many other things going on in the engine bay uh, that you just need to get clearances right on it and line length and all that good stuff but incredibly easy to do if I can do it you guys can do it so and this is my first time making custom fuel lines so if I can do it you can do it uh, but anyways, that's all I got for you guys on this one. I will link this kit down below as well as some other um, universal fuel fittings and lines. It'll all be like dash six line uh, with different kinds of AN fittings. But I hope this video helped you guys out. But anyways, if you guys liked the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it black, blue, green, yellow, cyan, red. I'm running out of colors aqua any of those colors whatever color turns for you guys go ahead and hit that like button and if you're not already subscribed to the channel hit your boy up because we're gonna be making some good power with the blob eye and the eg33 sti at some point whenever the motor comes back no i don't have an update on the eg33 yet i'm sorry whenever i get an update on it i'll share it with you guys but anyways i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out homies